Hi everyone, I hope you're doing fantastic today. I'm Das Smith and you've just tuned into the Future Forecasting Group's Para News Bites. Get ready for a quick dive into the world of the bizarre, the captivating, the paranormal in small news snippets from this past week. So with this, let's get to my first piece of news straight away. Okay, so my first paper-based piece of news I have here today is on the debrief. And it's the pyramid at Giza's controversial restoration has been halted by Egyptian authorities. A contentious restoration effort that is aimed to replace the ancient granite on one of Egypt's three famous pyramids at Giza, previously dubbed the project of the century, has been cancelled according to Egyptian authorities. Earlier this year, an ambitious effort to reinstall hundreds of the granite blocks that once formed its outer casing was announced. The controversial effort resulted in mixed views amongst the Egyptians as well as the international archaeological community, and ultimately resulted in a review of the proposal by Egypt's Antiquities Project. Now, the Pyramid Review Committee, headed by the former Egyptian Antiquities Minister Zawi Hawass has appointed to review the project, and this has unanimously objected to the reinstallation of the granite casing blocks, according to a statement issued last week. There's a picture of the blocks there. Hawass said true restoration of the pyramid would be impossible given that the project was never completed in antiquity and that attempting to do so today would require cement that would potentially damage the pyramid. What a crazy idea that that was in the first place. Um, absolutely crazy there to deface, you know, one of the ancient wonders of the world. But, you know, it looks like it's been stopped now, so that's a good one. If you're never going to see the pyramids, go see them. I've been there twice, been in them twice. They are absolutely amazing, but they are definitely not tombs of the ancients. So with that, let's move on to our next piece of news here on Science Alert. Ancient megalithics found in Peru is one of the oldest in the Americas. There's a picture of it there. Uh, one of the earliest examples of the date, an 18 meter, about 60 foot wide circular plaza made from large upright stones was recently excavated in a valley of northern Peru called Calacapuma. Findings from the ancient site, which was originally found nearly six decades before, now suggest that the plaza is around right about 4,750 years old. That makes it one of the odious monolithic structures found in all of the Americas. The plaza may therefore be a long lost meeting place of early nomadic societies coming together to negotiate new group identities for the first time. Here's an overhead view of the ancient circular plaza here. Uh, the remarkable site is banged by two concentric walls constructed from unshaped and unmortared megalithic stones each of which was probably chiselled out of the Exboro's bedrock roughly 50 metres away. There's more information on that one if that one interests you. As with all these news bites, I'm just reading small bites of information. The news to the full articles and the videos and all the sources are down below, so check those out in full. Very interesting one there. The next piece of news here I have is... Freedom of Information uh, request sheds light on the DIA's records pertaining to the Havana Syndrome. So on February 22nd, 2024, the Black Vault received a long-awaited response from the Defence Intelligence Agency to a Freedom of Information Act request filed on August 25th, 2021. The request saw all records related to the Havana Syndrome, a mysterious condition that has affected US diplomats and intelligence officers since the year 2016. Havana Syndrome first came to light when the U.S. Embassy staff in Havana, Cuba reported experiencing unexplained health issues, including headaches, dizziness and hearing loss. Similar incidents have been reported by American personnel in various countries, leading to speculation about the cause, ranging from sonic attacks to microwave weapons. The Black Vault's request aimed to uncover DIA reports, memos, assessments and intelligence records pertaining to the Havana Syndrome from 2016 to the date of processing. After a lengthy delay of a couple of years, the DIA located one document consisting of six pages responsive to the request. Uh, the release of this document, albeit heavily redacted, marks a rare instance of official acknowledgement of records pertaining to the Havana Syndrome. It provides a glimpse into the government's efforts to understand and address the condition which has been a source of controversy and concern. 
Here's a part of the document there and the full document loads in here on the website and you can download it there as well from the uh, Black Vault themselves. So go there and have a look at that if that would interest you. I also participated in a remote viewing project on this as well. So check out hellfirerv.com if you want to see that project. All the RV on that is live as well. Moving on here to UAPs. Now this is an interesting one. This comes from the English Swan website. Uh, and it's uh, created by the family of Ingo Swan after his death and they've added this extensive new page here for you to have a look at. So it's all about extraterrestrials, telepathy, earth side and space flight visits to the moon, ultra secret and UFO activities, cover ups and a lot more. It is extensive. It goes into thousands and thousands of pages that uncover with these little drops down here. Um, so if that kind of stuff interests you, and essentially it's the story of Ingo Swan, how he's been involved in remote viewing and UAP and secret projects, all kinds of stuff, Mars, the moon, aliens on Earth, everything. It's all in there. Have a look at that and let us know what you think. But to add to that as well, there are a couple of podcasts uh, with Ellie. Uh, Ellie Flippin is the niece of Ingo Swan. She's the one that runs his estate. She's done a couple of podcasts here on UAP Studies podcast that also supports this story and everything that's going on as well. They are fantastic to listen to. But not only that, the entire podcast is absolutely packed of absolutely fantastic UAP related information there for you to listen to. So whether you're hoovering the house or you're on a long drive or just going out for a walk, these are fantastic to listen to, so you subscribe to that. Great content for you there. So with this moving on now, we're going to move on to some video-based news here. My first video piece, piece of news here is on News Spotlight 7 here. This goes on for around about 47 minutes, and is an in interview between Professor Mikau Kau and Ross Colehart. Uh, very interesting interview here, uh, packed full of lots of really interesting information. As I said, it's nearly an hour long, so sit down and watch that one. Very interesting on that one. My second file here is from uh, the Y Files. This goes on for 44 minutes. It's Mysteries Beneath the Ice, The Secrets of Antarctica. Uh, subscribe to this channel. They always put out amazing content. You know, again, it's nearly an hour, so sit down and have fun with that one. It's got some great stuff in there for you. My final video here today is a new channel that I've subscribed to, so get, get, this, a, get this a go. Uh, it's a, a little bit fun, it's interesting. I'm giving it a whirl myself to see if I want to keep listening to what they're talking about, but they generally do UAP roundups, so this is Cosmic Road. This goes on for around about 25 minutes, and it's essentially a UFO news roundup showing the new UAP videos, all the stuff that's being talked about on Twitter, UFO Twitter, and more. Uh, it's just a great piece of fun there on that one. So that's it with the uh, news bites today. You know, lots happening in the paranormal world. We're still waiting for full disclosure. Lots happening all around the world anyway. If you find anything yourself, let us know, you know, in the comments below and we'll try to check it out for you. Be safe out there. Have a great week. Namaste. And we'll see you next time.